same sex marriage and things like that and like sexual relations it seems like a lot of obviously conservative christians want to preserve at least what they take to be the traditional christian view which is that only heterosexual uh, romantic relationships are valid in the eyes of god or ethically correct and so they'll appeal to this a couple of different ways um some more interesting than others so on the less interesting side they'll just be appeals to scripture so say the old testament but that's pretty weak given the counter examples in regards to old testament but then there's a couple in the new testament uh from like paul's letters and things like that about like you know god you know, giving them over to their passions and lusting after them and so they take these passages to be um you know saying that gay marriage and gay you know, not heteronormative relations are, are wrong or any kind of homosexual um, sexual activity even or romantic involvement is somehow wrong in the eyes of God. So that so the, the less interesting argument is going to be just something just on like scripture. But those are never that interesting arguments because <laughs> it's like, OK, well, I don't accept that. Give me something else. Or like even Christians will be like, I don't accept that interpretation. Give me something else. So those are the less interesting. But we can talk about those first. But then the more interesting still pretty bad but more interesting side of that i think is going to come out of like more so the catholic tradition with like natural law theory and like perverted faculty arguments which of course also have numerous counter examples but there's at least there's at least a kind of a case being made there like you know the natural ends of things like teleology what have you um so there's probably more arguments so you can cover some of those if you if there's others that are relevant but i just think like the two you hear mostly are like some appeal to scripture or like traditional christian teaching this is one i hear a lot they're like, well, the Bible teaches this. And it's like, first of all, no. But like, you know, the Bible is not a moral guidebook. It's not how any Christian ever read it in the ancient world. But in any case, it's like, they're like, oh, well, this is just God's word. This is what God has said. And so therefore, it's so that's kind of like, I guess there's the, there's the divine command approach. And then there's the natural law approach. That's probably an easier way yeah. to like make that distinction. So um, what do you, because obviously uh, being a Christian, I, if I'm not incorrect, I believe you are you know you're not in the camp that that's wrong that being homosexual right. Right? Yeah. so <laughs> so i yeah. want i wonder what your kind of response is to those things or maybe so i guess if you want to like respond to why those are bad reasons to think it's wrong and then if you want to maybe mention like more like positively why you don't think it's wrong or why you think it's right or neutral whatever right. so however yeah. you want to handle that yeah yeah yeah, I guess, yeah, so you, you hear those two arguments. There's also a kind of um, consequentialist argument you hear uh, sometimes yeah. that, um, you know, just for some reason, uh, heterosexual marriage is good for society and gay marriage would be bad for society. It's, uh, there, there was a lot of, back when this was being fought through in the courts, there was a lot of very bad social science um, trying to show that... Um, kids raised by gay couples had worse outcomes because they wanted to show that, you know, you, you need to promote um, heterosexual families specifically because they're the ones that have good outcome. And there were, yeah, I mean, the, many, many problems with that. But yeah, um, yeah in, <laughs> in terms of the, the two, yeah, the two arguments that you just, you just gave, um, yeah, so there's this Bible-based argument. I mean, the, the Bible-based argument doesn't even immediately lead to any sociopolitical conclusion, right? You could hold the view that, yeah, God wants marriage to be between a man and a woman, but that's a, a religious belief. It's not something that needs to be enshrined in law. Um, but uh, even abstracting away from that, um, yeah, I mean, one one question is how to interpret even the stuff in... The New Testament. Some people think, well, Paul is really talking about, uh, you know, various kind of like pederastic relationships that existed in the Greco-Roman society. He probably, he at least wasn't thinking about uh, kind of egalitarian gay relationships. Blah blah. blah. Um, I guess. Even, I don't know, I'm not uh, a biblical scholar. I, I know a very small amount of Greek, but not enough to usefully <laughs> adjudicate any of that. Um, so I, I guess I think really the, the core of my response to that sort of thing is that, um, for, first of all, I'm not a biblical inerrantist. I don't, I don't think it's the case that the Bible is infallible. I don't think it's the case that thinking that really bears any kind of relationship that's very interesting to the rest of the stuff that Christians believe. Um, 
And I think that um, even people who say that they think that the Bible is infallible often interpret the Bible in light of uh, other things that they think are right, right? Um, When you show, uh, I mean, I I grew up around uh, a lot of Mennonites who are pacifists. And Jesus says, you know, turn the other cheek, blah, blah. And I think, okay, well, just don't, don't fight people. Um, and when you show that to conservative Christians, you tell them what the Mennonites think, they respond, well, of course, with, well, but what if somebody was going to kill your family? It would be okay to fight them then. Uh, so clearly that can't be what Jesus meant, right? Uh, right. So they interpret it in light of these other ethical beliefs they hold. Or you look at, I mean, there are parts in the Bible that seem to suggest that uh, it's wrong to charge interest on money. Um, the the people who wrote those passages, I mean, they weren't aware of modern economics about the time value of money or the role that finance could play. And I could, you know, so I mean, people, you know, you tell them about that. They say, well, you know, what they really were concerned about was kind of predatory lending, usury, understood. And, of, you know, for 1500 years, everybody thought this really meant you can't lend any money, right? Um, I mean, this was the, the view all throughout. And in fact, there were natural law arguments that it was unnatural to charge interest on money uh, because you're you're uh, reaping without sowing, essentially. Um, but uh, you know, people thought all this. Yeah, mod- modern capitalism yeah. happened. People realized, actually, finance is really important. We ought to be able to lend money. Then people thought, well, okay, given that it plays this important role, really we sh- what we need to do is look at the spirit of this command and think about how that applies to our context and so on. So I think that really everybody winds up Um, interpreting the Bible in light of uh, other other commitments that they hold. Um, And if those other commitments are evidentially justified, I think that's perfectly reasonable to think that, um, uh, to interpret it that way. But I think that if you're interpreting it that way, well, then in light of other reasons, and we'll need to talk about the other reasons, but I think because the balance of the evidence otherwise is so strongly in favor of gay relationships being permissible, that if you do have this commitment to biblical infallibility, when you look at these kind of vague remarks that Paul makes, um, well, you should say, well, look, if I'm committed to thinking that Paul only asserts truths here, then... Boy, it would kind of be nuts if he's really saying that all gay relationships are wrong. So you should interpret it in light of these other things you think, just like everybody does with everything else. Um, so that's what I think about the Bible stuff here. Um, now, when it comes to the, the natural law arguments, um, yeah, I mean, those are, I mean, there are, boy, they're, <laughs> There are issues where, even though I disagree with the right-wing position, I think that there are like decent philosophical arguments or empirical arguments for it. Um, I really don't think that about the natural law arguments for homo- against homosexuality. I've never been able to see why anybody would endorse these, apart from some antecedent commitment. To the, I mean, they just seem totally nuts to me. Um, <laughs> re- really, to the extent that virtually every premise in them seems to be false to me. Or, or nearly every, every maybe every like non-logical print. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, what what are the arguments? Well, I guess the argument is something like this. Look, the foundation of ethics is something to do with teleology. It has to do with fulfilling your nature. Um, uh, homosexuality represents uh, misusing uh, your sexual organs in this unnatural way. That's bad because it's precluding your filling your nature or something. Um, therefore, you shouldn't do it. Um, now, I don't accept um, this uh, teleological picture of ethics to begin with. Um, I don't accept this view that moral action, ethical action more broadly is a matter of fulfilling your nature. It doesn't seem to me like that has any ethical significance at all, actually. But even if I did, um, well, I mean, first of all, it's obviously not in general wrong to use things for unnatural purposes, right? Um, it's not wrong for an acrobat to walk on their hands. 
it's not wrong for me to chew gum, even though, you know, chewing presumably has to do with eating things. You don't eat the gum, you spit it out. Um, all sorts of, I mean, not, nobody, it would never occur to anybody to think that any of this stuff was wrong. Aquinas talks about the example, I think, of the guy walking on his hands, and he says, yeah, that's okay, because that's not opposed to man's good, but homosexuality is, so that's why. But, well, of course, why, well, why is it opposed to human good? So I thought it was because of stuff about unnaturalness, but, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so, I mean, why, it's not in general wrong to use organs in unnatural ways. Why well, think that, I mean, supposing that it was, why well, think that homosexuality represents using an organ in an unnatural way? I mean, sex seems like it serves all kinds of purposes. Um, you've got to get both the result that like the one, the one natural aim of sex is uh, reproduction or, you know, some, some things that are somehow premised upon reproduction. Um, you've also got, hey, this is my cat. Um, <laughs> you've, uh, you've got to get, uh, you've got to get that, um, which doesn't seem right. Doesn't seem like anything that anybody would endorse outside of this context where they have a motivation for it. Um, you've also, um, somehow you've got to get sterile heterosexual couples in. So you've got to yeah. say, well, <laughs> what? What really counts is the, you know, b the act being of the reproductive kind. You can't intentionally inhibit it, and you can't have their own kind of genitals, but it is okay if, uh, you know, even if you're both biologically incapable for some other reason, and, well, why would that be the case unless you have this, you know, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's a step of the art. I mean, it's, it's a form of argument, uh, which is such that I don't, yeah, I'm not persuaded by at all by any step of the argument, but even if I would spot some of the broader theoretical commitments, um, I don't see why you would, how, the, I don't see any plausible way for, say, the, the broad, you know, the, the view that uh, ethics is teleological and blah, I don't even see, even if we spot all that, any, any plausible way to get from that to the wrongness of homosexuality. Um, and I guess it's also, I mean, there's, it's also notable that there's no particular relationship, I mean, notable in the context of the discussion, that there's no particular relationship between the natural law arguments and, and Christianity. I mean, it's, it's a, an application of an Aristotelian form of argument that happens to have become popular among Catholics for historical reasons, yeah, but yeah. it's not like there's any particular theological reason.